Hey YouTube, and this is Yuki and UK1 here. Um, today I'm going to talk about side decking. Uh, first of all, uh, you have to come. At this point in time, there are many people that will um, be fine when it comes to actually playing and everything. But when it comes to officially side decking, what to side and uh, what to take out, it, it, it can be a bit of a trouble, and that could be the downfall in games two and three. Um, this is going to be a video to like help, hopefully, to um, for you to. Um, know what to do and um, how to make it more efficient. Um, so this is uh, I'll start here. Uh, first of all, you have to get it to. Uh, it can be first of all, it can be hard uh, to get the 15 spots, as you may want to side a bunch of stuff, and you have to cram it in and take a bunch of stuff out, which you may think is actually helpful. Um, for instance, you may um, want to side three. Leech in the lights or something because you hate the agent matchup. Um, but you may have to like bring it down to two or one because of what other stuff you're trying to cram in. Um, so that's, um, it was a lot harder last time, for instance, as there were so many decks uh, to side to prepare for, which meant that efficient siding of siding cards that are good at, in more than just one matchup. Um, luckily, nowadays, we only have four decks that you really have to side for, which is plants, dark worlds, agents, and I'm going to say rabbit, but I think it will be silly not to side rabbit, to be honest. Even if you don't think it's very good, and you don't think it's going to be much of a problem, if you get into the point where they get the, a lock-off against you, you're going to have a bit of a problem, which is why you're going to want to stop it in the first place, even if you don't think they're exactly good yourself, siding like mirrors of those, because no. But I was playing GBs and everyone was complaining to the fact that they don't have anything inside the GBs, which is a sort of reason why I run it, apart from the fact that I'm comfortable with it. So, for instance, Mirror of Rogues is good against Rabbit, but it's also good against the random Rogue GB matchup or other cards that you it would be good for. Um, then for Dark Worlds, uh, depending on what you're using, you could side Dimensional Fissures if you can get away with it. Otherwise, um, you have the MSTs, which are good against a lot of things, and it's done. Uh, it takes that side of the setting, uh, where the back row is a bit of a problem. So that's why MSTs are not good, because it's helpful in the load of like, stun matchups, but it's also helpful against the outfall matchup. Um, but what else? Uh, Leeching the Light is mainly just for agents, which kind of sucks. Um, if you don't main Maxi, siding Maxi is very good, because it's very good on the agent and that plant matchup, so that's another one. DD Crow for against plants and dark world. Um, the list goes on, so um, hopefully when you get that down, then you have to just look at the um, side deck and just get a brief note, put the cards in groups and stuff, and um, what you side it against. And just then keep that mirror image, uh, that image in your head of what you're siding in, so you can don't have to look through your side and go, do I want to side this in? Because you should already have that prepared pre-event. Because you, you only have three minutes for side decking, and I know it seems like it's a bit of time, but if you overthink, it, then it could lead to problems. If you overthinking, and it could lead to you having like a penalty, which you don't want in a big event. So oh, that's why. It, Always prepare what you're siding and what you're going to side it in against. Uh, then also, I know not many people try and do this, but if you can try and remember what you need to side out. Um, for instance, if you're going against great keepers, you're not going to want to keep them up to nine because it's not going to be very healthy. Um, so that's why always prepare, um, get the cards out that you're going to side in against each matchup, and then go right. What's going to be least helpful, or what can I? take out a copy of, say if you like main three copies of Maxi or something, and Maxi is helpful but it's not as efficient, say for agents, uh, you're going to want it to be a Venus play, but are you going to want it to be Um, what? I uh, uh, anyway, yeah, so that's the sort of thing I'm thinking of. So then make sure that you're completely aware, you, you will forget, you, maybe like when you're under pressure, Say you're not the top 16 of the YCS. You it may get under pressure and you may forget things, but if you already have it in your brain somewhere, or you've already thought this through, 
it will eventually come to you, and it won't take. The f then it won't. You won't be near the three minute mark. So everything's fine. Um. So that's a good way of to make sure you understand what you're going to be doing when it comes to side day, because side day is very important, for all, um, especially in this format. Um. I, yeah. So I think I might leave it there for this one. Um. I may come back to this because I could cover a lot more. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, the best way of doing this is testing every night track. Um, yeah, uh, just just think about it. Make sure you prepare. That's the main thing that you need to do for uh, when you go to a big event like the YCS Brighton or YCS Kansas coming up this weekend. Um, and side decking and understanding what you're going to do in the process is a very a full way of practicing for the event. Um, yeah, so I think I'll leave it there. I might come back to I may come back to this because um, there's a lot of things that I may have missed out that you may want to know. Um, yeah, so I probably will come back to this. But thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you have any comments, tips, or anything that you want me to do, uh, please do. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thank you and subscribe if you like it.